I returned to West Point in 1897 as an instructor in charge of discipline. And I thought to myself, we could develop that pride in Seward. I like to say it's like living in Mayberry on steroids. It's, this is the place to be. But shh, don't tell anyone we want to keep it that way. On April 15th, the night that Abraham Lincoln was assassinated, the plan was to also assassinate Seward and Vice President Andrew Johnson. I think it was a great way to bring our whole student body and staff and our principals together and everyone kind of felt like a big community and we were all one and it wasn't different groups that were trying to do everything and people were looking out for everyone. Hello and welcome to the newly renovated Nebraska National Guard Museum in downtown Seward. I'm Lance Schwartz inviting you to sit back and relax. We're going to spend the next 45 minutes exploring our town Seward. Seward is located 25 miles west of Lincoln and is home to nearly 7,000 residents. As you all probably know at this point, Nebraska became a state back in 1867. But what you probably didn't know is that Alaska became a United States territory in the very same year. To celebrate its 150 years in American hands, Alaska created a statue of William Henry Seward. This impressive six-foot-tall statue is on its way to Alaska. By the President of the United States of America, proclamation. And the reason this $200,000 statue happened to make its way through Seward, Nebraska, is because it's a statue of the man that Seward was named after, William Henry Seward. Seward played a very important role in the Lincoln administration during the Civil War. William Seward was the Secretary of State for President Abraham Lincoln. They were close friends. He was his closest advisor. William Seward negotiated the $7 million treaty agreement with Russia in March of 1867. I'm an architect. I uh, actually graduated from the University of Nebraska here uh, and moved to Alaska about a year after graduation. Wayne Jensen uh, spearheaded the, uh, this entire uh, effort to get this lasting the, uh, work of art Alaska. created. I'm the co-chair of the uh, committee in Juneau to erect this statue to commemorate the 150th anniversary of the Treaty of Session. This statue is about four years in the making. We are very pleased with the outcome of this. Uh, I think the artist really captured you know, a very thoughtful uh, pose uh, and one that's very serious. On April 15th, the night that Abraham Lincoln was assassinated, the plan was to also assassinate Seward and Vice President Andrew Johnson. Artist David Rubin says Tyler that attempt Powell, on Seward's life proved to be unsuccessful to because William he was Seward. recovering from a carriage accident. He would have been assassinated that night, but he was his life was saved because he was wearing a metal brace around his neck to support his jaw. David Rubin and his sister Judith sculpted this statue in the basement of their mother's home in New York City. It's taught me a lot about history. Erica Cradiville of Seward, Nebraska, thought it was important for this statue to make a special detour on its way to Alaska. To signify William Seward for what he did while he was a Secretary of State and to see the tie from Seward, Nebraska to Seward, Alaska. That statue will be in Juneau, Alaska for an unveiling in front of the Alaska State Capitol Building next Tuesday. Now back to Seward, where two years ago they turned an old armory into this beautiful new museum for the Nebraska National Guard. You know, I did 32 years in the Nebraska National Guard and Iowa National Guard. You know, I've loved my looking back on my military experience. It's, it was great being a soldier. Now retired from the military, Jerry Meyer also thinks it's great being the state historian for the Nebraska National Guard. I love it. And I love the history, and but but the history is the people, you know. And we look back on those years. We look back at our history. It's really stories. And there are stories everywhere you look in this museum. One of our uh, newest exhibits to the Nebraska National Guard is this mock World War One trench. Uh, it's the 100th anniversary of our uh, beginnings in World War One in 1917, and this mock-up was created by Stephen Baker from Ord, Nebraska, and it is on display to the museum through the uh, next couple years. We settled here in Seward just for a number of reasons. It's been a great move ever since. Lieutenant Colonel Kevin Hines is the state public affairs officer for the Nebraska National Guard. You also have a chance to see an actual P-51 Mustang engine. 
So I've had an opportunity to cover the National Guard for a lot of years, especially during the uh, Operation Desert Storm up until the current conflict. And the opportunity to, to be part of something that's gonna preserve those stories, this is kind of a, a dream come true because there are just so many stories that so many people don't even know it's part of our state's history. Lieutenant Colonel Hines says the museum is being unveiled in phases. This is the Jones National Bank Theater. This was part of the effort that we unveiled last summer at 4th of July. Lieutenant um, Colonel Hines says over the past 163 years, 109 Nebraska communities have hosted a National Guard or militia unit. We're talking tens of thousands of service members that have served both in war and in peacetime, but it's all part of this one Nebraska story. And that's why we're really excited to be able to help people know this part of Nebraska history that a lot of people probably have never even thought about. And Seward is a perfectly patriotic place to learn about the Nebraska National Guard. We couldn't think of a better place to be a part of than July 4th City because the National Guard is so tied to July 4th. And I couldn't think of a better place to build an impressive parade of American flags than this town that loves to celebrate America's independence. We do fly the flags continuously. They fly 365 days a year uh, and at night. Marv Taylor first got the idea for this parade of flags while he was on a trip in 2004. I was on Interstate 80 east of Des Moines and I saw a sign flag display two miles. Marv made his way into a small town called Brooklyn, Iowa. It was very impressive, but the thing that uh, I liked about it more than anything was, was the pride that the people of Brooklyn had in their flag display. Marv's fire was lit. And I thought to myself, we could develop that pride in Seward if we had something like that. It took Marv a decade to make it happen, but in 2014, with thousands of dollars worth of donations, Seward finally had their own parade of flags. This made it all possible. And this is what really makes me feel good. I look at this sign every time I come out here to look at the flag and think these are the people that made it happen. Marv had a lot of help from his friends constructing this fantastic exhibition of American pride. And the lead designer was Clarence Wadier. When the concrete came and everything, set the pole in and of course pour the concrete and everything and take a ruler and line that up so perfectly up and down both sides and then have somebody sighting in. and. Uh, I don't think we could have did it any better, I don't know. <laughs> Donors got the chance to attach special memory bands to each of the 50 flag poles. And Marv says each of the poles has a QR code. When we have uh, school children uh, visit us, most of them have a smartphone and they can use this smartphone to get the details of the flag. This a lot of care is taken to preserve each of the flags in the parade. We uh, replace uh, each of the flags uh, each year with new flags and we also repair them once each year. This impressive parade of flags is so fitting in Seward because they've been promoting Old Glory for nearly 30 years. Marv says that in 1989 he and the Seward Kiwanis Club started selling and installing flagpoles. Uh, next week we will be installing flagpole number 900. And you better believe there will be flags everywhere you look on Tuesday when Seward hosts its 149th 4th of July celebration. Every year, the community of Seward comes together in early June to kick off another exciting season of celebrating Independence Day. Hi, my name is Molly Merriquin. I was born in Seward, Nebraska. One thing I like about Seward is the nice people. And those nice people of Seward are celebrating the 4th of July for the 149th year in a row. Let's make this parade one they will remember and talk about 150 years from now. It's interesting to note that in the very same year that Nebraska is celebrating its sesquicentennial, Seward and Seward County are also celebrating their 150th anniversary. And uh, we were very surprised uh, when we won the State Festival of the Year Award. Clark Coulterman has been involved with Seward's 4th of July celebration for nearly a half a century. 
many people work hard on this celebration. It's our identity. Every community likes to have an identity and something to rally around. For Clark, supporting the local celebration runs in the family. We were having some time in the early 60s when it was a lot of unpatriotism, let's put it that way. Clark's mother is Betty Jean Coulterman, and she was part of the group that revitalized Seward celebration in 1965. We started talking, some of the older ones <clears throat> started talking about what it used to be. Betty Jean and her friends organized a little parade, and today, 52 years later, the Seward celebration is bigger and better than ever. This land was made for you and me. It's just a really neat to see the whole uh, town come together like it does. Roger Glowitz was the mayor of Seward for a long time. Every year you think, oh man, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of the same and so on. Are that many people going to really show up again? And, and boy, they do. They do indeed. Organizers estimate that as many as 40,000 people attend Seward celebration each year. Thank you very much. Spend the fourth in Seward. The pre-party gets underway tomorrow and extends into Monday. And then the big show gets popping on Tuesday with the grand parade beginning at 4 p.m. Coming up in Our Town Seward, Kitty makes cakes and Jeannie makes art. We'll be back right after this.